All right, now we're going to do some georeferencing in QGIS. So you see you've got QGIS launched here. And there are a few things we need to pay attention to. Um, first thing, we really have to pay attention to the coordinate reference system. All right, if you get a mismatch, it will not georeference properly. And so I've got a blank project here. I just started a new project. And if I go to Project and then properties and then on the CRS tab I can see that this is in the WGS 84 coordinate reference system and you can see from this window that this covers the whole earth which is what you would expect for something associated with the GPS systems anyway um, we don't necessarily want to work in this coordinate system this is the default um, again, recall that this is based on, you know, this is latitude and longitude, which is great for finding points, but it's not great for mapping. We probably want to do some sort of projection. We're going to leave it like this for just now. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add our known shape file, the one that's properly georeferenced. And so I'm going to find that. And it's here. And it's this file I sent you called Kentucky State Boundary. And so I'm going to grab it. I'm just going to drop it in the project. And it's going to ask about a transformation because this shapefile is not in the WGS. It's in this NAD83 um, projection. And so it's asking which transformation to use so that it'll map properly. Um, in general, I just take what their default is and it seems to work fine. So I'm just going to hit OK. And there's Kentucky. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the project properties again. And you're going to see that now it says that we are in that NAD83. So it seems like it does what ArcMap does that when you add a shapefile, the first shapefile sort of defines what the project's going to be. Well, I don't want this, nor do I want the WGS84. What I want is this one here, NAD83, but the UTM projection into Zone 16 North. All right. Remember, NAD83, that's just a datum. The UTM is a projection that's going to make a prettier map. And that's what I'd like to work with. And so I'd already used it. And so it's showing up here in my recently used reference systems. You may not see it here. You may have to search for it. And so you can use this to search for it. Now, because there are so many of these projections, they've got these codes, these EPSG, European Petroleum something something codes. And so that's how we can be very specific about which coordinate system we're using. And so the one I'd like to use is this EPSG 26916. And that's the code for my UTM Zone 16 North projection, which is appropriate for Kentucky. So again, if it doesn't show up here for you, you can just kind of search for Zone 16 N. And you can see down here, there are several of those. So the one we want, if we look around, is right here. This 26916. So you can select it. And once you select it, then in the future, it probably should show up here. And so it'll be a little bit quicker. Now, if you look at the map, you can see that that zone 16, that runs right through Kentucky. And that's why I like to use that one. So again, all we're doing is setting this up so it makes a better map. We're projecting into the UTM. So I'm going to hit Apply, then OK. And you may have noticed that the shape of Kentucky changed when we did that. Um, you can rewind and watch. You can see it behind that window. And that's what a projection does, right? It distorts some part of the map. And so since we were, were in a different projection earlier, or in a different coordinate system earlier, not necessarily a projection, Kentucky had a particular shape. When we switched to this new projection, 
that changed the shape of Kentucky. But it, again, I think it, it looks better, but also UTMs are based in meters and they're very easy to work with. At any rate, we really have to pay attention to that, um, especially when georeferencing. Okay, so now we need to load in um, the ungeoreferenced map. And before we do that, let's just take a look at it. And so uh, I want to look at this SRD in Kentucky jpeg that I sent you and so this is a map that I scanned in from a book and southern red belly dace um, they've got a new um, genus now for these fish but these are all verified locations where this fish has been sampled in Kentucky and so this is a nice map but it has no spatial reference and so perhaps if we could give this a spatial reference then we could also uh, mark each one of these points and then they would also then have a spatial reference and in this way we could take the location data from this book and we could bring it into GIS but that's down the road right now we just need to georeference this so this is what that map looks like and so we don't have to load it in to QGIS we can do that through the georeferencing window now the first time you do this, you've got to turn on the proper plugin. So when you get QGIS, it doesn't automatically georeference things. And so you want to go to plugins, manage and install plugins. And so this is going to populate with a list. And these are all different little plugins, little small programs that you could add to make QGIS do specific things. And if you scroll down, you should find GeoReferencer, G-D-A-L. And yours is probably unchecked the first time you, you launch QGIS. So check it. And then just hit close. Now, you'll never have to do that again. It should always be turned on every time you use that computer. So once you do that, you have the ability to GeoReference. So we're going to go to Raster. And then this GeoReferencer should show up. And so when you click on that, you get a new window. And so this new window is where we're going to do our work. And so we want to load in that new map. And so we can use this button here. And here's that JPEG. So we're going to open it. And there's the JPEG. And so just like before, we just need to find control points. We need to find spots that we can match on this map to the other map. Now, before we had cities or we had other things that were easy to match up. Here, in our reference shapefile, all we have is the shape of Kentucky. So we're going to have to find spots along the border that we can match up. And so let's find some distinguishing spots on this map that we can easily find in the other map. And so we want to zoom in and zoom out. And so the scroll wheel is your best friend. Mac people, I can't help you. And you can see that the quality of the scan will affect the quality of the georeferencing because, you know, it's you scan in, it starts to pixelate. You can't really pick out things. So that's going to limit our precision. And then we want to use the pan tool, the little hand, to move to spots where we can find easily noticed points. And so this southwestern corner is an easily noticed point. So I'm going to take the add points but tool and I'm going to click that. And I get a new window that shows up. And so if I knew the coordinates of that location, I could just type them in, but I don't know that. I'm going to get them from the map canvas. So when I hit this button, since I have this automatically high georeferencer window checked, when I hit this, that slides out of the way and shows me the map that is properly georeferenced. And so again, I'm going to scroll wheel to zoom in, grab the pan, zoom in here, and uh, I lost my tool, so let's go... Uh, 
back and the georeferencer window keeps sliding over to my other monitor for some reason. Okay, I got this back and now I'm going to go back to the map canvas and I'm going to click and there we go. And when I hit OK, now I saved that. So again, I apologize. I've got two monitors here and, and this window keeps popping up on the other monitor. So you'll have the same problem if you have two monitors. Anyway, you can see this little red dot and so I've made one um, reference point. And so I want to get a bunch of these and I want to spread them out, but I don't have to spread them. I don't have to, to do them side to side. I can just go along the border here. So I'm just going to kind of slide along the border. And you see that little corner there? That's kind of an easy spot to find. This little corner in the border of Tennessee. So I'm going to click that. Go to Map Canvas. I'm going to get my little pan tool. Let's just zoom along. And there's that corner. And uh, so... What I need to do is click on that and hit OK. And so I'm going to tell you what. Um, since my window keeps jumping to the other monitor, I'm just going to leave it there. And you got the idea. So now I'm going to go along and I'm just going to match up a bunch of those control points until I get several of them and I'm happy. <laughs> Okay, I think I've found a better way to kind of demonstrate. I want you to be able to see both windows. So here again, I'm in the georeferencer window, and I'm panning along until I find a good looking spot. And what I want to do is now I want to go to the main map and go find my corresponding spot. And so now I can see them both. And so it looks, makes it a little easier. So when I get my point, I'm going to click on the new map, get from map canvas, and then go to the good map. And so that way I can kind of keep an eye on both of them. So now I'm going to scan along until I find something obvious in the new map, find the corresponding spot in the good map, and make my match my points up. Okay, I've got several points. I'm kind of happy with those. And you can see I've got the points sort of spread around the border. And you can see that we've got a table of all the points here. And so again, I, I think if I messed up a point, I could come down here and just delete it. So now we're ready to actually do the georeference. And so I want to come up here and hit the play button to start georeferencing, but it's saying set the transformation type. I have to give it information on how I want it to build this map. And so when I hit OK, then the transformation settings window pops up. And another way you could do this is to go to settings, transformation settings. And so the transformation type, you've got several different types. Thin plate spline seems to work. Resampling seems to work. Here is a very critical spot. You have to match the target SRS. Um, you know, the, this is the coordinate reference system. You have to match that to the project. All right. And so you see that it's, automatically chosen 26916, which is good because that is what the project is. Um, the easy thing to do is to get this drop down and to always choose the one that the project is set to. All right. And so either one of these would work, but I'm just going to choose project. In my experience, if you don't choose the project CRS, then the map does not properly georeference. And so 
my suggestion is to do exactly this. Now you can give a name to the output raster. You'll notice that it's going to save it as a TIFF file. That is a type of raster that shows images, but that it contains the spatial information within the file. So you, whereas before we had several files we had to drag along here, we only need to one file. Otherwise, leave everything the same. And I like to check this box to automatically load it when you're done. And I'm going to hit OK. And nothing happens. Because all we did was set the transformation settings. Now, when we go and hit the play button, it should do the georeference. And you can see that up here we got this georeference successful. And now we're getting this message again because it's going to do a little transformation so that it maps it properly to the window. Again, I don't understand why this is popping up because we set the new map to the project coordinate reference system, but whatever, just hit OK. And then we can move this out of the way and we can scroll back and you can see that the new map shows up on our project. Now, is it in the right spot? Well, let's turn it off and there's Kentucky. So it's roughly in the right spot. How close is it? Um, one thing we can do is to just come over here to layers and rearrange them so Kentucky's on top. And you see the state, of, you know, it fills in pretty well. And so that looks like it did a very good job of georeferencing. And we can also uh, put the state underneath. And we can come over here to layer styling and change the transparency. And so make that new map a little more transparent and see how the state shows up in either way. So it looks like we've done a good job. And now we have geo-referenced um, an image in QGIS. All right. Well, let me know if you got any questions.